to Zach. Happy 26th birthday, motherfucker. Fuck, baby. Fuck. Yes. Oh. You're Dude, the cancel. best. We deserve the best, motherfucker. Fuck, baby. Fuck. Cancel, and that cancel is the party. The that's all I need. That's the best birthday <laughs> gift amazing. you could have ever yeah. gotten. Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 63 of uh, Dropouts. This week, we've got uh, two people that look similar. What's up, guys? Go ahead <laughs> and introduce on. yourselves. Uh, Nick Turturro Jr. There we go. Nick Turturro third. Oh, you're the third? Yeah, I'm the third. Oh. And is your dad three. Nick Turturro? Yeah, he was the original Nick Turturro, so I'm just a... Uh, I'm junior. He was senior. Sometimes when I got my mail when I was a kid, he was kind of obsessed with things over repeating themselves. So he'd say, are you junior? I go, yeah. He goes, because I'm senior. <laughs> I say, he goes, you're junior, right? I go, yeah, I'm junior. He goes, make sure you put junior. I said, all right, that, all right. Because I'm senior. <laughs> he's he's a big said, man in you. Oh, no, but, but he was a tough guy, man, really tough. And he would be like, I'm senior. Make sure you put junior. And I'd be like, all right, I'll put junior. <laughs> no, I love, I love people that just say what's on their mind. So my mom, uh, my grandpa, he... Would come I'm gonna, to church. I'm going to cut you off for about two seconds. Roll the intro music real oh, quick. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We sorry. always forget to do this. <laughs> All right. So, uh, boy, do we have some things to talk about. What's up, B words? Welcome back to episode 63 of Dropouts. Continue your story about your grandparents. Yes. No, no, my grandpa's just the guy that will say anything, kind of like your dad, <laughs> oh. but he's a little bit more. Oh. It's sometimes he gets a little heinous. So, uh, my yeah. mom would drag him to church. He didn't want to go, but he needed a little Jesus in his life every now and again. And uh, he would sit in the middle of the pew as, as mad as he could be, and he would blow his nose and just shout, you got to blow your nose this much because you do this much cocaine. And he's just like, <laughs> I'm like, Grandpa. And then my mom would like go down to pray, and he'd like announce that she's praying more than us because she sins more than us, just so he didn't have to go again. It, it was really funny. I will admit, uh, after having a couple couple dinners, couple lunches with his family, with, un- with, uncle, with Uncle Ryan and Grandpa Larry... It gets a little wild. You got to kind of sit there and you just give the face to the waiter or waitress and go. I wish he could have met him. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he would have he he would have loved him. Oh, I bet. He's like, like yeah. different than me, different than my brother John. And he's like, you know, he's good friends with my brother John. But my dad was a whole other animal. No, I, I, I read a little bit. I was just trying to get caught up on both of you before you came in. And was it true that your dad fought on D-Day? And yeah. That's beautiful. Oh my God. I came from a huge military background and I saw that. I was like, wow. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Did you have have any stories or? I don't know. John went to Normandy and uh, it was a story that the uh, destroyer got, half of it got blown up. Jeez. And the the side he was on, uh, I guess he was, he he was, he really should have been on the other side or something. He was like on the, the wrong side and the lockers pinned him against. Then a story tells that he was like Samson, that he pushed the, <laughs> he pushed I like the, that. He pushed the lockers. I don't know if you guys curse. No, no. No, we do. You can do uh, is He pushed the fucking lockers. <laughs> of them. So, um, you know, and then he came back. He was 17, 8, whatever. And he was, I guess, you know, a lot of guys come back shell-shocked. And when he, How old was he when he came back? He was a young guy. I mean, you know, he was like, I don't know, maybe 18. Or, he was just a kid. I mean, you know, just, I mean, he looked like a man. He... He looked yeah. like a man when he was six. Yeah. They have a picture of him with a cane and stuff, you know. He's the only guy to come from Italy. His brothers were all born. Uh, so like that scene on Godfather 2 when the kid was on the boat, yeah. you know. Uh, but he was with his mother or some shit. He smoked cigarettes or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he smoked <laughs> yeah. at six, but, So you know. it, he met his wife after that? Or y- your mother? He met my mother uh, in his, I guess, uh, I don't know if they met in their 20s or... So, so they, they create you. Yeah. And then eventually you create this fine young man here who was uh, an up-and-coming rapper, Nick the Third. Nick Nick. Nick Nick. That's what yeah. you call it. That's what we, we mean. On set, we had to, by the way, we all did a movie together. That's how we all came to know. Well, yes. you knew my mom, but we all came to know each other via the movie that we just shot in Chicago. Yeah. Um, Called? The Crusades. There Crusades. you go. I casted Indiana. Thank you for uh, that. I met her. Do you appreciate the, and, uh, the pull for that? Thank yeah, you. And uh, I told our director she's right, and we got a caster, and uh, it worked out, and now we're best friends, all this kind of stuff. I know Zach, Jared, so perfect. Hey there. You guys can't say too much, obviously, but the movie looked like it's going to be really good. Yeah. Like a lot of character it, in it. It's going to be something special. That's and beautiful. And the people involved and the way it was shot. And, you know, a lot of people on set had a lot to prove, especially, you know, like, He's a veteran. He came and did his thing. But, like, you know, this is a lot of uh, the people's first time, like, doing a comedy or being a lead. So um, it was awesome. And it's going to come out probably next year. And but music, music's your main thing, correct? Yeah. Right now, uh, music's, like, my main focus. That's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I've really been putting in the effort for, like, a 
a couple. No, we years went now. to your show the other yeah. day. Put in an effort. Dude, oh my I, god! How many, cal- how many calories did show. you burn? A lot. A lot of <laughs> calories. I, I weighed in before the show like one forty six, and I weighed in after like one forty. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen someone put that much energy. Like that's what you come to a show for. So you've definitely got that energy. That was yeah. Beautiful. No matter the size of the room. I mean, that small room was. Packed. Yeah. Like How many packed. bruises you got from from falling in that? Oh, mosh pit? from the mosh pit that yeah. he incited. Like you fell yeah, over yeah. like twice. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, it was once, okay. but it was a hard fall. No, yeah. I mean, you know, when we come to perform, man, like I, my idols are like Travis Scott, Kanye West. Like, oh yeah. The, were you in the, the mosh? Hmm? Oh, oh, he was oh, deep was in I the mosh. mosh. When, yeah. When, when you, I'm I injured, like, so I couldn't go as hard as I like. But I was. You in had your shirt off. I want to hear that. I could go a lot harder. Okay. Okay. We did indeed see you. I was just like. <laughs> He's going. When we, when we party, like we go hard. But when yeah. I perform, like, and those guys are like my idols and the the ones who I groomed my like not sound but like just energy off of. You you go to their shows and you come away like with an out of body experience. So for me, regardless if there's five people, three hundred people, like there was the other night in the room, packed tight, you can't move. You got to give that energy each and every time, and you're given a show. Even if they don't like you, if they're not your fucking fan, you got to give them a show and an experience. And with that yeah. being you said, you make yourself fans. Yeah, we have we. You have to do it. Like we, me and uh, Jack, or my friend, we we did a show in fucking Apple Valley like three months ago, <laughs> and there was not many people there. But when we got on stage, we did three songs. I told everyone get to the stage, and then we rocked it for three songs, and we're like, okay, boom, like. That's fine. Like we did our job. We How got many people attention. did you have there? Three hundred last the other night. No, I'm talking about Apple Valley. Oh, like twenty people. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? It was bizarre. It That's was like good, it's all about the energy you but, bring. Yeah, one hundred percent. It so, is yeah. about the energy you bring, and like you brought it. You also had a majority, if not all, of your cast in that audience. Yeah. We were going off, Ashley and I. Yes. Oh, Ashley. Um, Rudy, Rudy's girlfriend, me, Khalil, like, Khalil. Juno. You know, Ryan Ash, and aka Jerry. Oh yes, yes, yes. We were going, <laughs> <laughs> we were going so hard in that audience. Yeah. But what Nobody was good was, was that you know us. he he has all you people there. He has all his fan boys and whatever. But <laughs> but the thing is, they, they, like it's not just hype. The guy is delivering now. He oh, one hundred percent, and knocked it out of the park. I mean, I was like, look, man, he's sustained. And even if it was like another two fifty, people would have been excited. Yeah, they yeah. Been, maybe they wouldn't have been as riled because they know the kid and they know the songs. But no, a lot of people there yeah. didn't know you. No, a lot of people I didn't. invited yeah. people that never saw him, never heard of him. They were like, but even a lot of these songs aren't out. So like, I know that I was just I'm like just saying no. But with that being said, like they don't even know what they're going co- coming to hear. Mm-hmm. So I'm teaching them the lyrics as the show goes on, and I'm interacting. So but like, you ain't just hype, there. is what I'm saying. I'm how many, saying, how many shows legit. have you seen him perform? I've been seeing him perform the last couple of years, but uh, he's done a he did a, a like a uh, showcase at Dame Dash plays at the house. I've seen him perform uh, like a full show, like two times. But yeah. you, you as a dad, like that's like we were in a very um, intimate venue, which is I think perfect for like something like that because we're all feeling the energy. How do you feel as a dad to see everyone responding so well? I, I'm not surprised because yeah. he came out when he was a kid in a in a, in a recital. Right? Yeah. He came out. My daughter was a great dancer. She's a great singer, all this stuff, you know. So he comes out and he moonwalked in a white suit. Oh, hell yeah. Smooth and he criminal. fucking was a savage. <laughs> I mean, he this girl, Furley, he came out. He, he just had a magnetism about, I mean, his acting he's working on. But as a musical performer, this kid is the real deal. He, and he's self-taught and has turned it into a really like, he's got star potential. I mean, he has that. It fact that not everybody has that. Some people are talented, but they they get up there and they're like, "You're bored." Yeah, you're yeah. bored. You know, because I, I could be a TikTok it. star, but yeah, this guy is a real. You know, he's a real artist now. I mean, he's a real to be taken serious with. I ex- I expected good music because like I've I've heard it before, but I wasn't sure how that like because I've only known you as like a calm, energetic person, and then you yeah. jumped and ran on the stage. I was like, "That's about to be a good show." And he's not okay. afraid. He's got. He, he knows how to make an entrance. Oh no, no! He knows great. how to finish a song. He knows how to play with a crowd without telling the crowd, "Hey, man, I need you to, I need you to cheer." Yeah, I need you to. Hey, you gotta earn that. You can't just say, "I need you." to. No, he's not sucking off the crowd. He's fucking yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. He knows how to use them. So he's really a, you know, being a great performer. Like I say, some people are and some aren't, and that's his. And his music is getting better. Mm-hmm. And for a kid that didn't even sing, he's learning how to sing, and that's pretty. Yeah. You know, the reason I knew 
most of the lyrics was because in Chicago, and I have a story to tell about Chicago. <laughs> so we were staying at, in hotel rooms, like not together, but like our we were all sharing walls pretty much. The whole cast was mm-hmm. like, it was like one person after the other, this whole like roundabout. 100%. And I didn't know anyone too well prior to coming in. Like I, I know I've met you like twice before we went to go shoot. I knew no one else. Um, and it was like, I don't know what time it was. It would have been like, two two or three in the morning at this time and i'm like i gotta be up at like five in the morning for call and you're blasting your damn music <laughs> it was good and i but it Debbie's was like got two, the fatty yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know that oh yeah fatty, so. got the fattest ass yeah it's good um literally and i was too nervous to say anything i was just like i gotta sleep i'm too scared to knock on his door and tell him to shut the fuck up <laughs> dude by fourth day there i'm banging on his door Shut the fuck up, Nick. Yeah, when did real Indy come out? When did she like attack Fourth you day? with the claws? So like, okay, so oh, with the cl- oh my god, with, with the what? With Khalil. The- oh, okay. Claws so, came out to play so, with so, Khalil. So here's the thing, right? I know I work with her mom and all this kind of stuff, and then whatever we cast her, and I said, hey, I want to come hang out, whatever, uh, before we go. So I went to her mom's house. We kicked it. Like she was getting her hair done. It was like for cool, the movie, yeah, yeah, cool day. Mm-hmm. And then I had like a cast party. It was all good. The first night we got there, there was only like me, her, Kali- uh, Juno, Ashton, and Rudy there. And we brought like burgers and she was just kicking in. The first five days, like we didn't shoot. Yeah. The f- first three days we chilled. Which then is the- just as important as like the shooting because it's that chemistry you're building. I'm yeah, sure. right. yeah. Also, I think like we were all just like settling in, waiting for the rest of the cast to get there. Right. I think we'd done like fittings and makeup tests. We hadn't even done that yet. We oh, were just, yeah, we, we did that the last two days. Two days, yeah. And it was just kind of like, all right, well, let's get to know each other. And then we just started like fucking around and just talking. And then my version of her where I guess the real version, we all went to uh, the city the first weekend and it was like a hot day and I was just trying to show them around downtown and this and that. And like, she was just like, no, we're doing this. Like we're, we're walking this and that. So I was like, okay, well, I guess we're following her lead. And you should be used to the Italian. Yeah. You know, so, she's, so, got, she's got a so, lot in her. You see the eyebrows. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I like saw her like real personality. And then from there, me, her and Ashton, like, we pretty much did everything together. So it really like, did like, yo, like you want to go eat? Okay, let's go. Target eat. runs. You want to go target? Let's go to target. For like the fifth time. Yeah. So, was mean, it you and Ashton that were um, lady in the tramping a noodle at one point? I saw a picture. Oh, hey, man. Ashton, maybe, maybe we could pull it up. Hey, Ashton and Khalil. I got, that was like our little, that was like our little <laughs> photo. Yeah. Me, Ashton and Khalil were just acting like I don't know fools if you're, on We'll set. put it in, uh, well, in you, post. I've got like in, three yeah. with a pickle, a chip and a couple yeah. other things. We, but We were just... If you, you know. got anything to say, like those are intimate moments. I don't know if you guys are all in a relationship together or what it is, but it's fine. What, 100%. I, will, what I will say is that uh, Khalil's a sweet hearted person. Oh, he's. And. Uh, That's beautiful. Indy. Is not. The, beat the shit out of him <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. Hear me out. All right, right. Indy was so. Indy I was am so, definitely like, I think a huge reason as to why you saw. Like, uh, um, it was, we were on the, on the, the original casting with you and Leo on on our zoom call to like see if i'm good for this role or not right oh that's how you got cast. that's how i got this is how i got cast in this movie yeah i am a very sweet person until you until i switch it's like a boom like a light switch but go ahead (laughs) it's like a light switch moment he brought up jared this is jared by the way the one who fucked up my car um he brought (laughs) up he brought up my car being messed up and i went off and it's like that switch is so my character it's just like she's sweet she's sweet she's sweet until like boom you piss her off and she's like there's no like don't don't fuck with her so so when we were casting this right i was pitching her to to our director he was like okay like she act what does she do and i was like yeah she's a good actress this and that and i was like we're getting on the zoom call and i said hey Leo, when when she gets on the Zoom, ask her about her car. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew what the character had to be, and I heard I was. What did you do to the car? I was uh, I was but, backing uh, out uh, of uh, a tight uh, spot. Uh, uh, let, what? Let me give you some backstory. It's a brand new twenty twenty Mercedes that I just bought. It's a month old. Wow! It is a month old. Go ahead. She had the flex on us real quick. Go ahead. No, because you know. need to know why it's I was nice, so pissed. It's a nice car. I would have been pissed if you did that to my 09 Camry, okay? <laughs> I knocked off the mirror. Anyway, I was backing out of a really tight spot in our garage down there, and um, and I was so worried about not hitting the car next to me that I didn't 
think about the pole that I was backing out next to. Yeah. And I just like scraped the side of the passenger door and, and then like mirror. knocked off the mirror. Um, but her car, 2020 Mercedes is supposed to have a thousand sensors on it. I didn't hear one beep. You know why I'm disappointed in you though? What? You call me, you call me your best friend. You call me your roommate. You call me all these titles. that don't mean a thing to me now. And you say, Zach, I was on the road and somebody <laughs> sideswiped me. I don't know I what happened scared. in my car. Cause you, and you lied Cause to me. I knew about the fire that was going to rain down on me. Man, we and had, I was you like, you didn't get rained on too bad. I'll be honest. Honest. I well, that's done annoying. A- I mean, but so what did you do to make it right? I mean, what did I do to make it? I it doesn't sound like it was I got terrible. punched by her ex boyfriend. That is true. That's <laughs> that how is we true. Made it right. That is how we made it. Ex right. boyfriend. Yeah. So she's got a very toxic ex. You want to get into it? <laughs> no, I don't need to know that. No, no. Right. Ooh, enough toxicity. Right yeah, now. yeah. So got a really um, shitty ex. Therapies uh, later today. She'll get yeah, into yeah. it. <laughs> got a really shitty ex. He ended up punching him in the face. Punching him? Him? Yeah. yeah. It was Halloween. When did that happen? I was, so the the ex boyfriend, volatile ex boyfriend. Mm-hmm. punched him mm-hmm. yeah so he waits outside of a halloween party for us for two hours and stocks the house he sees jared come outside or something like that yeah well like well, someone it intentional what he did right no 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 no, no. This, no, no. this has nothing to do with it they're just this test- is just him getting i guess this was this is just, how we made up for it it, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't like it was it wasn't connected no but, no, no, no um we didn't no. punch it in the face yeah like he he threw like a little hook but so what happened we're at a halloween party he's stalking outside like the owners of the we're house still together no well, I mean, when he when you no. punched, they him. were still like talking. We were but talking, but we weren't together. Anymore. Yeah. You what? Told him, oh, my my friend over here scraped my car. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. no. Well, we don't know. She might. No, have. I didn't. So no, he showed no, up to the, the party. He showed up to the party. Oh. He was stalking, like stalking us inside oh, stalking for you. like three hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, one of my friends comes and is like, dude, your ex is here, and I was like, what? So I run outside. I'm like, dude, you have to leave. You have to go because if they find out, if these two find out you're here, like it's gonna be a fight. Like yeah. there's going to be a How fight. How long did you so, date this guy? Like two years. Oh. It was really bad. So then they get in an argument outside. Then one of the owners of the house comes in and gets me. He's like, dude, so-and-so is outside arguing with Indy. Like, let's, we got to figure this out. So then I run out there. I'm like, dude, just leave. Like, we don't want a problem. And then he's like, oh, you don't want a problem? You don't want a problem? And starts shoving me and then like And then I panic. Hook. I run inside, grab him, but he's already throwing a hook at him. Yeah, so yeah. He, he punched me and then before I could even like look back at him, one of our friends like tackled, tackled him. him to the ground and knocked him out. So what happened? Did they arrest him? No. no um, <laughs> later that night, night he, he scaled her home and tried he to break into in. my house. So then we had to call the police. Broke into your house? Well, he tried he to. He tried. Where tried is he to- now? I don't fucking know. Which is terrifying. That but, is a little scary. Um, I don't know where he's at. How, so you messed up the car. I messed right. up the car. How'd you guys meet? You Who? guys uh, met at birth? How was that? <laughs> so you met, where'd you meet he, his? Well, he's the, you know, he's the sperm guy. Cause that's the sperm guy. He's just a sperm guy. That's what okay, I call I, my I dad do want to say something. <laughs> I do. There's been something that's been on my mind and I wanted to ask you both this. So going on to this movie, I, I had. A, <laughs> She's I, like, I know you're talking, but I got, I got thoughts. So. I I'm a little more than sperm. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I felt a lot of pressure going on to this film, especially somebody that is more present in the social media world. I felt like I had a lot to to show, right? Because I was scared that people on the show were going to be like, oh, she's some TikTok star. She can't act. She doesn't know what she's doing, yada, 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 right? Um, and so especially when you were on set, Nick, I was- Big Nick. Big Nick. I was really nervous because you're a vet in this industry. You've done some of the most classic, classic movies you've been in countless things and i was nervous i was like all right i gotta make this good i gotta make this good and so you coming from a dad that is so so influential and just a vet in this industry how do you feel like do you think you have a lot to live up to like how does that make you feel well for me it's just kind of like like i'll put it to you this way right like i know i love acting but i'm at a place when it right now where i'm growing to love it more Mm -hmm. So my investment in it has grown. And, you know, since coming from him and my uncle and my aunt, like it doesn't feel like a pressure to me because it's like we all are going to do our own thing. So for me, it's like, oh, I'm not just like carrying on the name, even though like that's like the narrative. But it's kind of like, no, it's like I'm going to do my own thing. Like John's very serious, but he can be funny. He's serious. but He can be funny. But like I want to make music. I want to do this. I want to produce things. I want to write. I want to direct like. So with that being said, like, I want to just do my own thing, but it's not like an credit, like, oh, I'm dissing the family. It's like, no, like, I don't, I'm not going to put a pressure on myself to be like 
I got to be as good as this because we're all going to do different things because him and his brother are great in their own ways, mm -hmm. you know? So like he's more, he, he has certain roles that he works great for and John has certain things that he's great for. So for me, you know, I don't come on to like a set like, you know, or wherever I'm like, oh, I got to, I got to be as good as this. It's like, no, I'm just going to do the best I can. And then whatever happens, happens. So, mm. cause if I put the pressure on myself and I don't do it, I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to make people this more like, and that's not what I'm, I'm here to do. I'm just here to, you know, do the best I can. And you know, whatever happens, happens, you know? So yeah. that's good to hear. And then big Nick, if you were starting acting, if you're starting entertainment right now, you're, you're 18 right now, how would you go into getting every, getting into everything right now? Like if you're just starting out as a kid. Since if I was 18? Yeah. And I was trying to get into show business yeah, now? Yeah, now. Like, compared to what it used to be. I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't really know because I I, uh, I started kind of late in my late 20s. I, mean, I fooled around with it in college, and then I kind of let it go. I was a doorman for a lot of years. And then I got serious about it. Like, in my mid-20s, I started taking an acting class, and then I just stumbled into a guy who put me in a movie, and I really... Got the bug, and then I started really so tell pursuing the, Tell it. who the guy is. So that makes Spike sense. Lee, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so but small guy. name drop. But you yeah, it's a guy. It was heard a different of industry back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. You know what I mean? People went to college. People went to the theater circuit. I did a little theater in New York. I did off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway. Uh, so I did about three or four years of like, uh, where I had some stage credibility. I actually got, you know, I, I liked it a lot. But then I started getting some television work, and I said, wow. I'm going to make a living at this. I don't think I'm going to be a theater actor. Yeah. Even though I loved it and it taught me a lot, um, it probably would have made me even a more well-rounded actor. But, I mean, today there's so many different ways to get into it. So do you think it's harder back then or, or now? Because there's so many ways, but is there more people? I don't know. I actually think uh, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to get started today but I don't, I don't, I may be harder to sustain. Yeah, I, that I makes sense. I think, you know, yeah. here's the difference in my opinion, the world he comes from with his industry and ours. And this is just the straight up honest truth. Today, something can be very successful that is not good quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, that's. Yeah. And that's the difference between his era versus ours, where his era you had to be fucking good yeah. mm -hmm. to do it. You had to be talented. Like, yeah. Let's be real. There's a lot of shows out there that fucking suck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of actors that suck. But there is success. What's, and what's I, that Drake line? Like, um, celebrity is, oh, is not... Well, nowadays, fame is disconnected from excellence. Yeah. Now, that's everybody true. can be famous, but no one... Like, there's not as much work put into it. That's true. And the thing is, it's like, yeah. to me, when I meet people, and, like, I'll be like, I want... Like, if you're, like, say, like, you're famous, whatever, you know, like if I meet, if I meet Kanye West, I'm like, you're, you're the, one of the greatest artists of our time. That's why you're famous and you're in fashion. You're this and that. But then sometimes you meet people and you're like, why are you famous? Yeah. yeah. Like what exactly do you do? And it's and very, they don't even know in this industry, like, and this is not me. Sh this is not me. You can decide whether you want to put this part in or not. This is <laughs> oh, not boy. me shaping. You can keep this part in. I think you're a good example of someone who has numbers and can put eyeballs on something because you do social media, but you can act. So that's like, that's really good for hiring. Here, but it's it, also hard to weed out because if you get labeled like just a social 100%. media person, they're probably like, no. Here, it, here's what I'll say about, oh, sorry yeah, to cut no, you off, yeah. but here's what I'll say about when I met Indy and, you know, like not like too many preconceived notions, whatever, because I'm a very like just open person until yeah. I meet you. I knew from the jump that when we were doing the movie, she was perfect for the role because of the energy and the attitude that she had when I met her that day. And on top of it, like, she actually can act. It's not like she's just acting because, like, it's another avenue. She can fucking act. Yeah. And she can become a huge star and a huge movie star if she wants to, and, and it probably will become that. And I'll say it here because... That's why I wanted to cast her in the film. And I know plenty of people who are in like the social thing that like want to do it. And I'm like, you guys ain't shit. Yeah. Because it's not you, just because this and that doesn't mean you can read a fucking you can do a monologue in a film and make someone believe you're that character. Yeah. You know, like you need to write her IMDb bio. That was perfect. <laughs> I that do was appreciate perfect. that. No, Thank like, you. Because to me, it's like there's just like there's so there's so many people that you have to differentiate the difference on what they do and this and that. And 
you know, you there's a there's like a lane right now where it works, but it's not going to be forever because at the end of the day, quality always outlasts things. Mm -hmm. And that's why okay. artists fade. This is why certain people fade. And then there's the artists that always stay. Like Drake is dropping tonight. And this is like his like seventh or eighth album or something like oh, that. he's dropping another album tonight? But, yeah. but it's like <gasps> the fact that he's been around as long as almost I've been alive and he's had a hit every single year on top of a hit he has great features he has great album cuts you see how great of an artist this guy is because he's actually a fucking artist he's not like yeah he's popular on social media yeah this and that but he's an artist he makes great music yeah. he's known for what he does and that's why he continuously will always have a number one album a number one record because he puts the time in. He this is what he wants. Like even if he wasn't famous, he'd be doing this too. He quit mm -hmm. acting to make music. That's yeah. true. So. I really like Drake for a different reason. He's a Kentucky basketball fan, and that's my <laughs> favorite thing on earth. <laughs> um, but like to switch to switch topics a little bit. Speaking of sports, one of your biggest roles, Brucey. I was wondering if you heard about the Bishop Sycamore. Oh um, my God, Bishop I, Sycamore. Okay, so it's a it's a high school it's a high school football team, and they went up against IMG Academy. Um, on ESPN and it turns out after the game there's this big scandal and they just found out all the players um, it was not a real school they set up a fake address a, a fake website finagle their way onto ESPN and a lot of the players had played junior college football yeah and, like, and played against IMG Academy on live on ESPN and they didn't figure it out till they already aired the thing like one of the players got interviewed after the game and they go how old are you and he answers honestly he goes 23 <laughs> like like <laughs> already played college I, I know you like sports I didn't know about if, yeah. what you thought about that that's pretty You're crazy a Yankee I, fan, aren't you? I'm a big Yankee fan I'm a baseball aficionado kind of a same baseball historian yeah. Yeah. so I not only know the game I talk the game I live the game I uh, I eat and sleep it. It's sort of like I, I have a cult following now as a Yankee fan. So one hundred percent. one more if bad you season. Think I, if you I, think uh, I do not see your Twitter videos, yeah. I well, I went to the Yankee Angel game yesterday. I said I, I need him. to break the four game losing streak, so I need to be there. So all the Yankee fans were getting wild, and then at the end of the game, it was like, I mean, I have a lot of fans from the movies and television because I've been around a long time. But now all these people are coming up. Like I have a, like it's a separate like being a and like now I'm a professional Yankee fan. And I have like, well, you look like you're about to run out on the field right well, now. Well, I just put on the jersey. I was just like, you know, for some reason, it's just Russell Athletic. I just bought it off eBay. I just I've been buying Yankee jerseys, other jerseys too for like years. He has years. an addiction to eBay. Where'd your uh, yeah. love for the Yankees come? Uh, I went to a Yankee game in 1973 with the Boy Scouts of America. And uh, I just started watching baseball like 71, 72. I saw Roberto Clemente. 71 and then 72 i remember uh just just starting to like watch i think i went to a met game because i'm yeah. from queens yeah i was afraid of heights and my friends <laughs> took me and they were laughing and i said take me down take me down i was really afraid <laughs> yeah it was in the mezzanine and they were giggling laughing like what are we gonna do with this guy i go no get me fucking down I, I can't sit here i was having like anxiety you know from mm -hmm. the height and um so then i went to a yankee game and you know it's just like crazy shit you know what happens like i walked in the stadium in the bronx i knew nothing of the bronx it was kind of intimidating south bronx was scary it was like all burnt out you know drug infested whatever and uh i just fell in love it was like it was like when i saw my wife like i was like i saw her on a plane i was like i was in love i was yeah. like this yeah, my is mom it. was a flight attendant so this is it i was so kind of like that oh, oh, it was kind of like that when i saw this woman she had long hair she looked at me i looked at her and i was like damn this, I don't know if she, you know, by the end of the flight, I introduced myself. She almost didn't give me the right number, but I convinced <laughs> where, her. Where was your first date? Where was my first date? Yeah, with it was her. Memorial Day, 1994. Oh, wow. And I took her to the Fox lot uh, where I shot NYPD Blue. Okay, <laughs> I like I that. Had a, that's a nice, that's a, that's a nice first on. date. That's a flat, that's yeah. big baller. And move. I had a uh, uh, orange Volkswagen. I just started on the show. Yeah. She thought I was going to show up like, you know, some fancy car. I'm like, I wasn't trying to impress her. Like, yeah. I had a cabriolet. I bought it off my agent's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so even my cast was like, Nick, you got to get a little better car than that chick car. So uh, I took her on the Fox lot. And um, well, I remember when I picked her up, I never saw her at a uniform. I mean, she's still a beautiful, beautiful lady. Um, but she was really, really gorgeous. And um, so I was so excited when I opened the door and I'm I was like kind of nervous and she was burning uh, incense. So I thought she was like one of these voodoo girls or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then saw her out of uniform and she's just beautiful naturally, Filipino girl. And uh, 
I was kind of like, you know, trying to get close to her. She was like, hey, hey, take it easy. I, was, I, didn't, I, I wasn't overly aggressive. Yeah. I was just like excited. Yeah, you uh, couldn't like, show the real you just yet. You had to fake it until she loved you. I, well, I didn't know if she loved me. I didn't, <laughs> she liked me. Yeah. I really was smitten by her. So then I took her to the Fox lot, and then we sat on a park bench by uh, the commissary. And it was before, like now it's all built up. It's like corporate. Yeah. But it had, back then I was like just bungalows and it was sort of like it was sweet you know she told me about she had a boyfriend and then she had some other guy and then i was i had been married and all this stuff crazy stuff it sounds- but um you know, we just started talking we had a really good date and then um we kissed at the end of the date which Ooh. was nice it that sounds- was it it was sounds it. like you knew immediately this was no, no i was into her yeah and then i i, I, f- I drove her back to the hotel and uh, i went to the dodger game and i called her from the dodger game i didn't go up to her room i just called her and she said, I, I, uh, I said, you know, I guess I called it, you know, to check in or something. And you see, how, do, how you feel, how's, you know, how you, how you feeling? Mm-hmm. You know, she was like, uh, you know, I think I like you. I Ooh. remember her telling me that. And I, I was like, well, yeah, I, I like you too. I like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I really did. Yeah. I really did. And I, and um, even though like we had a little bumpy road first year or whatever, then one time we like broke up a little because I wasn't sure like, but I, I knew it was different, you know. I was on TV then, and, and, you know, I had been married before and all this stuff. But and I could have just been single, but it was just like, I, I said, I, I can't let this girl go. And because uh, it was a different feeling, you know. I just knew it was a different feeling. Yeah. You know, it was very different for me and for her, too, yeah. I think, you know. And I was like, I don't want to see her with somebody else. Oh, oh yeah. Fuck that's, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, I mean, you know, it was all kinds of guys coming around, this and that. And I'm like. I, I, I mean, they I could coming be... coming around or are they coming No, they're, they're, they're talking about your mother like that. No, That's your man. mother. What the fuck's wrong with you? So, <laughs> you know, because whatever. <laughs> whatever. I mean, you're, you know, because there was a time where she was like, well, what are we going to do? What do you want me to do? Are you going to, you know, because, you know, whatever. And I, at one time I was like, well, uh, you know, you're a free girl. I was like, I'm thinking about, why did I even say that? Because <laughs> then I think she went out on some dates and things like that. Oh, God. Oh, I bet and, that hurt like hell. Oh, it hurt. Because, yeah. you know, she kept the damn... I didn't want to talk about that, but she kept a damn. Uh, she's like one of these girls that fucking recorded everything in her life, a diary or whatever. So it's like you had to go. So when and you it was pre- sitting on the bed one time. Oh, and you saw it all. Well, I didn't see it all, but I didn't want to open it. But it was right there. It wasn't like I was snooping. And then I read something I, d- I didn't like. And then I was like, ah, fuck. Were, were you, did you journal or diary? No, I don't do that shit. I <laughs> journal shit. Everything is, my, you know, I, I don't record. Oh, I blew a whatever. I did this. Or I, <laughs> Went to the bathroom at six thirty. I don't do that. I'm not. I'm not going to record all my, all my stuff and how I felt. And then you know you're going to read stuff about people that you don't. That's going to upset you because <laughs> you love this girl, you know. And, and she was a good girl. Yeah. It's just that I'm like, well, you know what, man? I'm not. I'm not losing her to anybody. Definitely. I we're feel gonna, like we're going to be together. And and I came through. Yeah. And you know. And how long have you guys been together now? Twenty five years. Twenty five years. And you got yeah. this one after three. Look at that. Yeah, he was the second one. My first one was oh, you my got another daughter. One? Oh, Apollonia. beautiful. So we had him the first. Baby, yeah. You're the baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a good kid. He actually, uh, even though we, we have a wild, you know, like a love-hate type of, but it's all really love. <laughs> yeah. It's no hate. It's just, he, you know, he likes to bicker with me. He likes to challenge me a lot, but he's actually a good kid. Um, and uh, yeah, but he was the second one. So he was not the knick-knick and he was a, a pain in the ass as a kid. So oh, from a child. I had to leave the, the, the He's room. a pain in the ass now. Yeah, yeah, but he was all over his mother for years, sneaking in my room, sneaking in my bed. <laughs> I would turn to make a move on my wife and it's him. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> he used to sneak in and, in the dark and you know, the guy would be like, no, and he just jumps in the bed. And I'm like, I couldn't get him out of my bed for years. And I'm like, you're infiltrating my love. You know what I mean? You I mean, could have had another brother or sister, but you. Yeah, I he messed it up. I told my mom, no, no. I, I wanted like, that more kids. That. He ruined it for me. I said, right, "That's it. I'm done." But you have enough kids now, anyways. Like well, I had all, a all my kid all too. my friends are your like kids too. So yeah, I have all these matter. other kids that are like. Your I'm daughter's like, got a beautiful little baby. Yes, yes. we have oh a beautiful my grandson. He he's gorgeous. When I no 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 when I tell you this baby is just like. Picturesque. Yeah, like he's, it, he's, uh, he's 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 really a incredible. Beautiful baby. Gorgeous, yeah. beautiful he's baby. incredible. And then Gabe is and Gabe is my Gabe? wife's uh, my wife's first cousin wife's who's first been cousin. with me for over over twenty years. Came you, to you guys are dating? L.A. No, not dating, <laughs> but we're like big brother, little brother. Fell in love with him. 
And my favorite uh, videos are you guys together. You're screaming about the Yankees. He's just like, well, listen. Before he was White Claw Gabe, he's been a very, very funny guy for a long, long time. Yeah. This guy helped create him, make him into a star. Yeah, because a lot, know, a lot of people, accidentally, a happened. lot of people don't know this, but like I manage Gabe. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. On top oh, right. of and Gabe I, is funny. He no, might be a social media star. Come over here, you can. No, he's hysterical. He's hilarious. Come over, Gabe. White Claw Gabe in the house. He's become. That, um, that you can lift that middle part up, and if you guys might have to share a mic, but yeah, we can move share this. With, share with Gabe. Come over here. Get in tight. The White Castle. Oh, that takes me back to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That oh, White yes. Castle. <laughs> so you just have to lean into it. Sorry. Yeah. Don't look. Make him look like you're blowing him though. <laughs> yeah, uh, he is. Uh, he's really uh, relevant right now, and I think he's. He's got a big audience. His fan base is crazy. It's just oh, yeah. growing. Well, one of them's right here. Yeah. I've seen I all mean, of his videos. I mean, he's at the Yankee game yesterday. They're calling did, him the goat. Did you, <laughs> did you the know? Goat is here. Did you know we were family or no? No. I literally, we walked into the venue the other day and I was like, He came up to me. He went, I was oh, like, why call Gabe's here? I said, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People I was like, what? on our social media go, you're trying to bite off. I, I go, bite off. I know the guy 20 something years. <laughs> you have no idea my connection or relationship or love way before he was famous. No, it's insane. It his, is crazy. His hive is insane because it's Tell like, him, Nick. When we go out in public or we go to like, like uh, we go to Miami or Chicago or we go to a bar or something. People lose their mind because they don't think he's real because this <laughs> shit is so like, it's so aggressive. It's so and wild. And all his videos are like this, like right on his face. So you recognize him immediately. Oh yeah. 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 It's crazy. And like, you know, we, how he got his name was we would call him tequila Gabe when he would drink tequila. <laughs> and then when we were shooting my music video, Tiffany, everybody was drinking white claws on set and he was drinking a white claw. And then we started to notice that, he was drinking them every day and he goes, I like the White Claws and he doesn't usually like to drink. So we're like, I was like, hey, White Claw Gabe. And then I said, you should change your social names to it. He said, I don't want to do that. I'm like, you should change your social names to White Claw Gabe. And then he made a video where he was cursing and it kind of did some Fuck number. Baby. And, Fuck baby. And, uh, <laughs> and then, then uh, where did the, the fuck, uh, like when he was cursing, when that video blew up, he wasn't doing Fuck Baby. It Fuck wasn't, baby. It, not that it blew up. The numbers just spiked. Okay. So in my mind, I was like, maybe people like it when you curse because of the algorithm on TikTok and all yeah. that stuff. And then, right. which is really odd, by the way, because most people, whenever they cuss, whenever they do anything controversial or bad, it immediately plummets their videos to the floor and they get banned from TikTok. He's been the opposite. Yeah, he cusses in every damn video and, and then suddenly explodes. <laughs> yeah. When did you guys start with uh, making the videos? November last November year. last year, and then around February. Around the Super Bowl, it all changed for him. Yeah. He made this video where he's laying on the couch and he goes, uh, it's Monday. I want to snuggle. If you want to come <laughs> snuggle with me. And if you don't, go fuck yourself. And then I he, fucking saw that and, video. And then he made another video where he was walking and he goes, he goes, uh, COVID-19 or not, get your fucking workout. And if you're not, you're a pussy. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's and a perfect then, motivator. And then those blew up and then... We just kind of went for it, and then we came up with steak night a week later, and then this and that, and then when we went to Vegas, he just hit twenty thousand followers, and then in a span of two days, he went to a hundred k, and then a damn, week, and dude. then a week or two later, he was at two hundred, and then around my birthday, it was That's like three hundred, which was like April. So the trajectory, I was like, you'll well, probably what's, what's he at? What are you at now? A million. That's, That's crazy. Beautiful. So he, I said he'll probably hit a million in August, and I was right. You, wow. hit it, you hit it in August? Yeah. Has wow. White, Claw, White Claw better have reached out by now? Just Not yet. Two. Are you serious? Oh, I we have, okay. I right, thought so it was, we, told, we have a story like that yeah. too. We got 150 million views on a video of us talking about a Capri Sun. Not a damn text. Not a DM. Not a reach out. Not Nada. A, that's you. insane. And we got them like 150 million views. Every major meme site posted that video. It got millions of views on Why TikTok. Why do you think that is? Because they suck. No, because their marketing team are ran by people that don't understand TikTok and don't understand how big of an impact social media has nowadays. Like, yeah. it's ran by 60-year-olds that still think, I don't know, commercials on cable TV are going to do something. Well, here's what's insane for him. And people drink White Claws because of him. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yes. And we got to know somebody. We, we can you're, figure you're, out somebody that knows like, White Claw. To me, it's like, yo, people post the fucking drink. They say... Fuck baby, fuck White Claw Gabe, and then all of my a sudden, my mom does it. That's I what do it. That's what I'm saying. I know it. plenty yeah. of people who drink White Claws now just because of, of him. Of course, of him. Yeah, we go to so like, you can't tell me 
if you work for White Claw, that he's not bringing you fucking people 100%. value. I'm not even just value. Like, he brings you business. That's free promo. Like, like out of most alcohol drinks, like, think about it with your friends, right? If they post when they're drinking or something. What alcohol do they post the most? The white, white Claw. Not even just White Claw, but like a hard liquor. What do they post the most? Tequila? Tequila or vodka. What kind of tequila? Uh, 42. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just our rich friends, so, by so, the way. So, yeah, that's that's only our okay. rich friends. I'm just saying our, our group sphere, right? Yeah. Normal so, people so, do not post up no, with 42s but, but, in their hands. But my point being is that if you're posting a 42, you're doing it with the intention to let people know, yo, I'm drinking this shit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the incentive to posting a white claw? That's true. There's none. Your incentive would either it's be cheap that and everyone buys it anyway. You're cheap, like everyone you're, has you're it. You're just like, trying to drink this and that. With that being said, he makes this drink feel like it's something more than it is. Yes. And for no, whatever we, reason. We can definitely right. find somebody that knows what. Yeah, I'm like, sure we we're going we're gonna to figure this out. We, we have. Yeah. Oh, listen, I'm sure they've heard of him. 100%. And I don't know about the cursing and all that. But listen. The, there's They're no, a liquor brand that brand. is a liquor brand. It's a yeah. liquor brand that and is predominantly for fucked up frats and sororities. That's I'm right. sure they're fine. Right. You're not doing something so wholesome. That <laughs> bro, bro, many people run liquor brands that like, like Conor McGregor, he curses all the time. Travis Scott is cacti. He curses in his songs. A lot of people have liquor brands that curse a lot. The Nelk yeah. Nel Boys, Somebody come has on. to reach out to them and say, look, you got a guy here that's, you know, booming and he's helping your business. Yeah. You got to recognize him. Otherwise, you know, I mean, you're going to lose him eventually because. Uh, yeah, because it's going to be like I the mean, Sprint, the Verizon and what, AT&T. Remember that guy flipped? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be I the mean, same thing. It's going to be the Bud he's Light good Seltzer for business. game. Yeah. He's, he's, the bottom line is he's good for business. His 100%. face. His fucking face. People love him. That I mean, would be the best Super Bowl, Bowl commercial ever. Literally just him like this saying it. Everyone would know and everyone would buy a white would Clark. go insane. Yeah. If he gets a Super Bowl commercial. Which is possible. Yeah, 100% I mean, like, possible. I know for a fact, like, even in just the I one video, the one video that we did for Capri Sun, people were, like, sending me, like, people still send you Capri Suns in our P.O. box. They send them Capri Suns. They always mention our Capri Sun video. Mm -hmm. Like, even when I was out in public, the one video, if they don't know who I am, the one video that they even think to, like, recognize us from, like, we've had a lot of viral videos, obviously, over the past year, but, like, a, a major one that brought people in was that fucking Capri Sun video. And they still, to this day, I still get DMs and comments being like, yo, Capri Sun ever reach out to you? Do you think it's worth it to have like a big hitter hit them up and, you know. Definitely. Well, I think we did hit them up. Yo, oh, yeah, we did. Like, with like, oh, for spot. their video. I mean, with, I mean, like for this guy. Oh, 100%. oh definitely. With White Claw. Yeah. I mean, you know, somebody, somebody who has got a little juice, just, you know, like start the conversation. Well, I so. know. Yeah. Cut this out. The guy brings you business, and you don't want to do. Business well, they're not gonna. The they're not gonna do. They're business. not gonna pay him if he's already promoting it. So I mean, that's yeah. the same with us. I told the people yesterday at the game that, like, I said they need to pay him. Bro. But with the good thing now is too is that he's kind of like White Claw is just almost just a nickname now. So it's kind of like, it's like, yeah, he likes White Claws, but like, it's just kind of his nickname. So good point. At this point. You're not even paying attention because he drinks White Claws. You're paying attention because he's funny as fuck. What's I am that? curious he is though. Funny right. as fuck. Right. I am curious though, Gabe. What's your favorite flavor? I like the. I Talk like in the, the mic, Gabe. Gabe. I like the lime. The lime. Oh, okay. nice. the lime's the best. It's like Seven Up with a kick on it. Gabe, nice. what, 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 <laughs> Gabe, what alcohols do you hate? I hate. Um, I tried Truly, but it tastes kind of bitter. Fuck Truly. <laughs> <laughs> there goes our Truly sponsor. <laughs> Gabe, give them a, give them like a taste of how you would do like a rant or something. Say like uh, somebody's being a pussy about working out. How would you do it? Oh, fuck those people. You fucking pussy. Fuck them. <laughs> Dude, you sound like my stepdad. Holy shit, so, I'm going to so cry what's right been now. Iconic. What, so where Gabe has made a lot of money to his cameo. So he... Oh, is, oh, oh God. He's I bet a, you would have made money he's on a, cameo. Fucking birthday. He's a top 10 earner on cameo overall. Are you app. serious? So like, say you wanted to buy a cameo Happy for... Happy fucking birthday. Dinner's for, on Gabe. For like, <laughs> Gabe, give, give uh, Jared a, a birthday cameo. Say he's the oh, man and he needs to get into person. Give it to him. It's his birthday. Oh, it is. Oh, it's Zach's oh birthday. give it to Zach. Uh, he's the man. He's turning every, twenty six. Every, everyone loves him. This and that. Go okay, ahead. I'd say to to uh, Zach. To Zach, happy twenty sixth birthday, motherfucker. Fuck baby. Fuck. Yes. Oh. Yeah, the cancel. best. We deserve the best, motherfucker. Fuck baby. Fuck. Cancel, and that cancel the party. The best, that's all I need. That's the best birthday <laughs> gift amazing. you could have ever yeah. gotten. Oh, okay, Gabe, you can't hear it, but I was I had the an applause sound effect under that. Yes. Yeah. This yeah. comes out on my birthday or the day after, so that's perfect. What Thank day you. is your birthday? The fourth. 
of September? Yeah. Hey, man. Happy birthday. Thank you, man. Hey, that man. means a lot. So I haven't even gotten it from her. Are you a Virgo? Uh, No, I'm a... Uh, was it asparagus? He's a Virgo. Oh, yeah. I'm a Virgo. You're a Virgo? Okay. That makes a lot of sense, well, That's why it? I get along with him. I'm a Taurus. Oh. Look there at us. Go. There you go. You know? Look at us. Do y'all really believe in, the, in that shit? I do. Too bullheaded and stubborn I got asked about people. that. What kind of I, Italian I, are you? Are you like... Sicilian. Not, you're Sicilian, girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say that. I'm half Sicilian. Are you really? But I'm I, very Sicilian. I see the Italian in you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you should see when the Italian's Yo, in her. You should see when the Italian's <laughs> in well, me. You know... You should see my dad. My dad's got like... he's He actually kind of looks like he's got very olive skin. Like, he's very Italian. Oh, one night? We need to all get together? Yeah, you know? We'll do, cook well, your pasta? Not anymore. You cook pasta? Not anymore. He's still got, he got white oh, hair now. she but makes a mean shrimp oh, pasta. Yeah. Is it valid? No, no, it, it is valid. She cooked tacos that were fucking fire in Chicago. So yeah, in the hotel room. On my hotel room right? floor. Yeah. And the pasta. Cook pasta on my hotel room floor, so too. Yeah, half Sicilian and what else? Half Sicilian and Albanian. Albanian? Is that Those are like a knockoff Italians. <laughs> 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 you. Yo, You're very pretty. Don't worry. <laughs> is, is that Julie, who's the Albanian? Um, my mom is half Italian, half Albanian, and then my dad's Italian. Valid, valid, valid. Yeah. What's but your last name? Masara. Okay. And then uh, you guys are. Um, <laughs> I'm Just I'm black from the waist down, but uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> she. Give, give, give me she. She gave that me. She. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but a lot of people you know. You guys are very German, aren't you? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, but I grew I grew up with like a lot of my like some of my family members are black, so I like to just say that, and then they'll be like, "No, you're definitely not. You're the whitest kid we know." And I'm like, and "Okay." Then, and then you bust that, out the picture. That checks out. That checks out. <laughs> that is it, photo is, is, is the picture a swimsuit or something like that? Like, oh no, it's it's it? a um. Oh, yeah. me and my. Should I pull it up? Pull it up. Send I'll find it. it. You guys me. can just talk. So um. Wait, no, I'm well, German and Irish. Like my maybe. grandfather's side. Well, yeah, I don't know what my dad He's is. He's a test tube baby. I'm a test tube baby. Whoa. Like my dad was a sperm donor. Where, um, where, where's your grandfather from? Boston? No, my grandfather is from, so his, he was first generation, I think, Irish. And then he grew up in Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. There's, a, there's a joke uh, our friend Russell has in his stand-up where he goes, people say they're Irish. And I'm like, where are you from? Boston. Where's, <laughs> Boston. where's your parents from? Boston. Where's your grandparents from? Boston. Where's your great grandparents from? Boston. And when the fuck were you Irish? <laughs> so that's his whole bit in the joke. So every time we, we hear someone say, "Oh, I'm Irish," we go, we go, "Where are you from? Boston." Boston. <laughs> I'm that's, fucking Irish. That's Wait, hilarious. Irish. I text it to you. Yeah. Big, okay. How like what part of Italy is your family from? And like where like where do you are you first generation second? Here, this I, is Zach and his I'm family. Oh, this is Zach and his fam. Oh, no, just one. This is my brother. But oh, um, is... Which one? This one? No, the one no. next one. Yeah. But, this one. So, like, that's why I get called the white kid. So. That's, his, uh, that's his brother. <laughs> wow. That's your, your brother? brother? Yeah. Uh, no, he, it was, it's kind of similar. Adopted. I don't know if you guys seen The Blind Side, but it's literally that <laughs> Literally oh. that story. That exact story, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, really? But not... Not I mean, that, like, not based off it. And our friend was actually in the blind set, so it's weird. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. But, yeah, so he went, he stayed with us, um, had a hard life, and then he went on to play, like, D1 football. And then his friend next to him went to the NFL. So that was it was really cool. That's Where awesome. was this? Where were you raised? Uh, Georgia. Oh, you're I was from Georgia? I was born in Vegas, but I lived in South Georgia for a while. Yeah. Okay. What Southern part, boy. What part of Vegas? Southern boy. Um, like, not quite Henderson, but getting there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we uh we stay in Henderson sometimes. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, if you're ever out there, let me know. Let's we'll do, do something. It. I like yeah, you like you like yeah. to gamble. Um, I I'm not the best at it, okay. but I'll I'll get this in there. Fool no, has no, 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 the no. Best luck He's got motherfucking dumb luck when it comes. He'll put like a hundred on what he'll be like. I'm all in for this one thing, and he'll just double his money Dude, and then leave. Literally like, the Bye. last time. It's just we're, what I like. To, I like. I play one hand. I win and I leave. Were we in Georgia for your birthday? When were we there? Oh yeah, we found a casino in India. Yeah, we. Oh, we were in Kentucky. That's right. We we're just with your Georgia friends. Um, no, so we went to a casino in Indiana. It was his birthday, <laughs> and uh, and he. His friend Skyler gave him a hundred dollars, right? He's like, "This is your birthday present. Go do what you want. Win some money." So then we go to the blackjack table. We're about to leave, and this fool is dealt a twelve on the on the table, and he bets a full a hundred, you know, and That's then stays. Do. Blackjack, yeah, yeah stays yeah. stays on the twelve, and then wins. And that was the only well, bet. If they're he showing placed a sixteen. That. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to risk that ten coming. I know. I figured they're going to have a ten coming. Oh my god! So you but stayed with the twelve. Yeah, you stayed with you know, the twelve. I probably screwed over the guy next to me, but they went which over? was me. Everybody yeah. went over. Yeah, they went over. So how much was, you win? Just it was just a hundred. Like, but that was we used to have zero money, right, Jared? We, yeah, there, we moved to L.A. We lived in a two bedroom house with ten people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we met. We just it was like a hostel. Originally, situation. there were six people in this apartment. Yeah, yeah, but we lived in like this little shack, and then uh, we, we can afford beds. food now, which is nice. I, it is nice. Is nice. How big yeah. is this? 
This is 1,800 square feet. It's nice. No, it's no, great. yeah, we we love it now. We feel like we're kings now because we have our own bedroom. <laughs> literally. How long ago did you guys meet? Um, two years ago, two and a half. Coming oh, up on three. That's okay. Cool. And I met. So I met Zach. Wait, I want to ask this question real quick. Yeah. What well, what part? Where a part oh, of my it? My dad is born in a uh, place called Giovinazzo. He's he's buddies. Mm -hmm. So your dad so was. So your dad, dad is, your first generation. Yeah, my dad is from Bari, and mm -hmm. my mom was born in Brooklyn, but her. Parents were born in um, Agrigento, Sicily. So you're Italian. You're very I'm Italian. Italian. I, no so matter what my brother Italian. claims and all that DNA crap, I don't give a shit about so it. My, uh, they, went, they did an extensive thing on my family, uh, finding your roots with mm -hmm. John. I want to do that. Yeah, well, they, 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 they requested him. to So do it with him. I know that my dad, or it's, it's my, it's either, so my mom's half Albanian, half Italian. Yeah. And my dad is uh, Italian, and but he's from the part of Italy that uh, Sicily. And then there's another part of Italy that they have like some beef. There's like a part of Italy that Sicily and someone has beef with in Italy. I don't know what it is, but they're from like rival parts of Italy. That's Your all. Mom I, and dad. My mom and dad are from rival parts of Italy, right? And that makes sense. Well, <laughs> my father never liked the Sicilians. He used to say they were murderers and they were they cut throats and uh, I say the same thing about her. Say that about. You know, and uh, they got that. We are cutthroat people. I don't well, know what to tell you. Well, because <laughs> the mafia has been, you know, I mean, it was in Naples, too. I mean, mm -hmm. Naples is another scary place. Uh, parts of Naples. I've been there. You, you, know, you been to Italy? Yeah. Wow. Na Naples, man. There was parts there. I'm like, fuck I, that. I, I fucking, I got scared. My wife's like, don't, don't show anything. I'm like, I said, man, I don't know all these guys circling us. And I'm not from here. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I, I you could tell, you could feel like, you know, when you don't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sicily... Believe it or not, I, I love Sicily, and I feel like at home there, and it's like, because I look like a Sicilian. I look mixed. I know there's a bunch of things in me, but I'm like, I look like a true Sicilian. What's in you? You do. A you look very Sicilian. A cheeseburger <laughs> pizza. <laughs> they, they snuck in, you know, a black guy snuck in, this guy snuck in, a few people. <laughs> but basically, crazy. I'm Italian. Yeah, right. but he's like a fake Italian yeah, because it's like he's not fake Italian. No, because, he's got Italian blood no, in him. He's, because he's like Italian. because like he like he he his brother goes we're we're. I'm Italian from the from Italy, and he goes, "Well, I'm a I'm my a New brother's Italian. one of these aristocrats. He <laughs> likes to think he's like high and mighty, and you know, because he's an Italian citizen. I could get it too. Why don't you get it? I, what do we need it for? <laughs> Fucking do it. <laughs> Fucking American. I'm American Italian. Hell yeah, yeah. go yeah. I'm Australian Italian. I'm, I'm, I'm about to be I'm American. Not, I'm not one of the guys from off the boat. You know what they call those guys off <laughs> yeah. the boat? Zips. So Whatever. I have nothing against them, but I, I do like. The, I don't like a lot. I don't of know if it was. As, I don't know if so. A lot of uh, like a lot of Australia is just built up of Italians. Like especially Western Australia is just Italians everywhere. Like yeah. that's literally everyone's Italian in Australia. And so something that they used. to... I mean, everyone in my family calls people wogs, and that used to be a really offensive term to Italians. I don't know if that was in America too, no. but you know, it was. Do you, do, you, do you know? Do you know the offensive? Uh, um, Word towards Italians in America? Mm -mm. It's guinea. I don't even know I don't what that even means. Like that. He hates it. I call him a guinea, and I was like, I could say it. I'm <laughs> a guinea. Everyone, yeah. everyone uh, calls if, if, Italians. Well, they had dagos, if, if, wops. If you watch uh, like Goodfellas or any of those movies, they will be like, oh, you fucking guinea bastard, stuff like that. Like, it's all in that movie. Oh. That's why everyone. It's term of endearment now for yeah, Italians but in it's, Australia. It's New York slang. Yeah. So you know the Italians from Italy, they look at like New Yorkers, like you know all these. In, these Italians are different than us. Of course, they're going to be different. We grew up in a different place, of course. In America. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very like my my family was like all my like my grandparents and everyone in Australia is like very. They're more. I feel like on the traditional side of Italians, if like they. Yo, store bought pasta sauce is not a thing in their books. Yo, <laughs> never a thing. Store bought pasta. Period is not a thing in their books. Like. Oh my gosh! So my 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 nonna and my nonna, so your grandparent, and your grandpa, and your grandma, yeah, would turn over in their grave if they ever found out that we bought store bought pasta. Or Who's the cook like in that. your guys' family? My mom. Your mom. He says he's a cook, but he's not. He just <laughs> eats all about the food. That? Who makes the greatest scrambled eggs in the world? But you're not cooking the spaghetti. Who makes <laughs> the best sauce? Me, not your mother. I taught her. Cat, <laughs> did you teach her to make vodka sauce? Vodka sauce is bullshit. <laughs> Did you teach her to make cream the uh, cream sauce for the Alfredo fettuccine? That's oh, bullshit. That Come so on, good. bro. I'm the one that taught her. No, you didn't. How to make real sauce, real no. Italian sauce. I mean, there's only get way. The fuck uh, out we'll it. all come over. We'll have separate kitchens, and you guys can both cook for us. We'll no, cook. We, we'll, we, get, we'll we get a free. Decide. We get a free meal. Yes, yeah, so you know. And Gabe's a good grill man, right, Gabe? Oh, what do you make? What do you make? Tell him what you make, Gabe. 
I make ribeye steaks. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. That's what we chicken, ate last night. Chicken wings. Gabe, chicken, chicken wings. Gabe, Gabe is a lot of chicken like Gabe. Gabe is a grill master. He's a strip club legend. Hell he's, yeah. he's he's a famous TikToker now. He used to he used to do Uber. He's the he's Wait, the let's man get into this things. strip club legend. Wait, what? yeah. How do you become the legend? So like the ass gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> What's the ass gigolo game? Dude, talk on the mic. The ass gigolo, it's like I'm just sitting relaxing and some girl just dance dance her bottom in front of my face. Nice. Jiggles. Hell yeah. Nice. So you jiggles in your face. And that's right? how you become a legend. <laughs> so, so yeah. He became a strip club legend in Miami, specifically. We uh, went to this place called The Gold Rush, and we were throwing a lot of money that night, and then all these girls were like, oh, are you White Claw Gabe from TikTok? And they were just giving him dances, and oh, it was yeah. nonstop. It was insane. I couldn't stop laughing. They even played fucking Tiffany in the strip club, my song. Oh, that's and, cool. And he was getting twerked on that song. <laughs> <laughs> It was That's a good time. So funny. But yeah, he's a strip club legend. <laughs> you got to conquer more uh, more cities than just Miami. Yeah, if you're the legend, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, he. I think he might have to go on tour. So yeah, yeah a strip no, club no, tour. No, That's no, beautiful. Not just strip club. Oh, I'm in college. Okay. Maybe frats. Yeah. No. I, oh, frats would love you. I, yeah, I call love. Gabe tour. Well, we Nick Nick as his manager could be huge. Well, we do our main income right now is TikTok. I mean, we could get a lot of people like you and all of us together to have like maybe like a small venue, see how it worked out. Yeah, yeah we, we, we want to put on a, a live dropouts with some of our guests and just yeah. like have a bunch of people come in and you guys are obviously all characters. We'd love to have you guys that'd there. Be if you that'd, that'd be fun. That'd be really interesting. We should actually talk about we that. We want we music there too, so we could perform, we yeah. could do whatever I'll we want. I'll come do a couple of joints. We actually are gonna start making music together too, because I heard our music and I was yeah, like, Yeah, we got a back room with a little we, studio. We need oh to. yeah, there's a studio here. Oh. Jared's a producer. Oh dope. You make music too right yeah okay dope dope that's why i bought him a what guitar did i buy you for your birthday you bought me a fender telecaster that's a nice butterscotch gift. yellow it's a very nice gift it's a nice one yeah and it wasn't the uh, it there's a difference there's a mexican made and then there's an american made mm -hmm. one of them was more expensive and one of them was just like this one will last you forever and i was like do you play mostly guitar uh guitar and piano yeah okay. wait okay last thing that i want to bring up is cigars Yes. So when we were in, um, interesting. it is mm -hmm. interesting, but it plays a huge part in the Crusades in Chicago for us. Okay. Um, who were we trying to teach? Ryan. Jerry. Jerry. Ashton. And I said, okay, so we, we he had to learn how to smoke a cigar. Could not do it for the life of him. He kept inhaling. He's a big weed smoker. <laughs> kept I'm inhaling, done. right? Couldn't smoke it. And I, I looked him dead in the eye. Somebody that has never smoked in my life, never intend on smoking. I looked at him and I said, I bet you I can learn to smoke this cigar before you. And did I? Yep. How'd you look smoking it? I don't think it fits me, but... She I'm going to tell you something. When a woman... This is just me. <laughs> when a woman knows how to smoke a cigar, it is a turn on. It's yeah. not like a cigarette. Say, I can't stand it's cigarettes. Cigarette Joints, fuck that. That's like, whatever. I don't like <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing that turns me on. Now, like, when my wife knows, she doesn't smoke with me as much anymore, but she's great at smoking cigars. She just looks classy, sexy, smoking one. I love it. And so, I've seen other women. There's a few women that can carry the cigar. They know how to smoke. Some of his friends, they're all like, they look like wimps. Yeah, like this. yeah that other and guy. Like, you got that, hold kid, it. that kid Blaine hold it. I go, <laughs> fucking, it's just terrible. I said, what are you doing? You look horrible. Come here, let me show you how to hold I it. Did. I, I fucking did. I don't think that, I don't think I can carry a cigar because I still look too young. But I think in my 30s. Maybe when, nice little little older. Older. when I Maybe get a little, little older. older. Well, that yeah. night we were with some Chicago, yeah. like old old Chicago guys. Um, yeah, we they're were. Like, they're kind of like old. But who and taught you how to try it? Ooh. Um, what was Nick it? You, but who? But who else? Jack was Cerrone. Jack Cerrone. Yeah, oh, right. we were Jack having Cerrone. cigars, and Ashton never smoked. And oh, no. yeah. when you the rule of thumb with a cigar, you never inhale. Th you never inhale. No. So when you smoke weed, you smoke other things. You go. You let it get you in like, your throat. You let that shit sit in your lungs. You know cigars. You uh, never do it. So there's one. There's only one way to learn. You either do it or you don't. And oh if you yeah. do, most times you will throw up because it's just too strong. Yeah. And a lot of it is taste. It's essence. It's part of the environment. What's the best cigar you've ever had? My favorite, personally, I love Partagas or Partagas. Uh, I just like it because it's just it's a smooth smoke. It's very easy. It tastes good, and you don't really taste or smell like shit after it. Yeah. That's why I like it. But there is other great ones, you know. It's not even just like there's great Cuban ones. There's great Dominicans. Like uh, I like this one cigar right now called an Acid. That's like very sweet. So m for me, it's like if you don't smoke cigars but you want to try one, try like an Acid because you'll it'll be, taste like candy in a way. So it's good. But I got into it because of him, and he liked it. And then last year through the pandemic, 
uh, our friend Russell, everyone would come to his house and smoke cigars and I'm there all the time. So I'm like, I'll smoke, try another cigar, try this cigar. And then it just became a thing. And then a lot of my friends started liking it. So I was putting a lot of my friends on to you guys play poker or anything. Uh, not typically, but yeah. I would like to try and do that. But like cigars are really cool. Like there's an essence to it. And that night, like we were with the OGs and they were smoking. I know how to smoke it and Ashton just couldn't not <laughs> inhale it. And I was like, bro, you know, just don't. So Jack Cerrone, this old Chicago guy, goes, it's the coolest thing to smoke. He goes, uh, oh, he told us the cookie tray he, story. He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes. You want to know a story? You want to know a story? Fully, he's talking like this. He goes, you want to know a story? You want to know a story? Well, Jack Cerrone. Yeah, he goes, you want to know a story? Oh, he's great. You want to know a story? A- Ashton, listen to what I'm saying. And we we call Ashton Jerry. It's like a whole joke and stuff. I'm Martina. Okay. This is Angelo, and he's Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, so, but that so, Chicago accent is funny. no. So no. So Cerrone. No, let me finish. So Cerrone yeah. goes. So he goes. All right. All right. So you want to know a story? Ashton. He goes. Okay. So there's this little kid named Be- uh, Benji. He comes in every time. There's like a hot cookie plate. He wants to touch the plate. He wants to touch the plate. He wants to touch the plate. Knows Georgie. He goes. So so after a while, his dad keeps telling him, "Stop, Georgie. Stop touching the plate. Stop trying to touch the plate." So they you know what. Let the fucking kid touch the plate. <laughs> Let him touch it. See touch what the happens. Plate. Touch so, the plate, so, he gets burned. So Georgie touched the plate and he's burned. So now he knows never to touch the plate. So every time he comes, never touches it. So with that being said, Ashton, you could do one of two things. You can either smoke the cigar and inhale it. And if you throw up, then you fucking learned your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> he's a hard dude. And he's also, keep in mind, his motherfucker's like 6'5". He's scary. He's a scary dude. He's like 6'5 yeah. and big too. Like he's yeah. built. And so you're like, He's intimidating. Uh, all right, yep. man. Oh, and, oh, what? Shit. and that night, too, like, Indiana was holding court with all the OGs, and she was talking. And I was like, the only girl there, everybody, too. And everybody was like, yo, this girl's sharp. She's funny as fuck. I and, felt pretty baller. And so, like, like a so, like, the week so the week after we went to go see them, we're like, her. where's Indiana? And we're like, oh, she, she, she went home tonight. He goes, yeah, she needs to keep you two in line, you dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, I got really sick. You were there. I got really sick that night. No, 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 no. It was the night on the boat. That's the night me and Jerry came home like degenerates. Oh, yeah, these move. I don't know how y'all did it. I will give you. I will give you two props where props are due. Y'all showed up to set ready, alert, and knew every damn word of your script every time you came on the set. And I was really, really, really proud of y'all because of the night before you would have been fucking out at three thirty in the morning, blackout drunk with ten tequila shots. And I'm gonna let the record show this man drinks like a little bitch with his two lemon drops relax Andy. hey, hey relax. i'm right there with you relax no what's with you and your little lemon drops shit is sweet it's delicious <laughs> it's so good i want to enjoy what i'm drinking i yeah. was Jared, saying, like jerry was put on a vent how when were you put on that ventilator for drinking oh, oh yeah. dude i was working on the show and then i was what? working with them he for used like, to work on like a bunch of sets like mcmillions and this kid can drink like a fish but dude so then i i was working with them for eight months and then i was like uh um i wanted to branch out and like i was working in like post and then so, so i put in my two weeks and then the boss cussed me out in front of everybody and was just like he's like oh you like you can't quit i fire you sort of thing and that was the last day of like shooting you know and um and so then we had like a little rap party that night at a at a um is this the guy that cussed you out and said you'd never work again well, he said, he said, what are you going to do without us? Um, and so we had a little rap party at a karaoke bar. And so everybody saw what happened that day. And so everybody was buying me shots. And I remember our producer uh, came up to me and, they, and they, she said, she's like, Jared, you should probably slow down. Mm-hmm. And I was, she was like, what number is this? I said, 10. Uh, and uh, she was like, you should probably slow down. I said, fuck that. And I threw it back. And then I lost track at 14. It was at that moment he knew he fucked up. Yeah, I lost <laughs> track at 14. And then I woke up in somebody else's apartment and I called my producer. I said, what happened? She goes, dude, you got put on a ventilator, <laughs> a ventilator last night when Ryan, the set medic, like had one in his car and had to drag you out of the bar. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Was, you can't let this guy near any liquor. That's or any. Scary. Listen, I've had some bad blackout moments, man, like not maybe like one <laughs> or two, but not like that. Like, no, he was, I've, I've dealt with like, you would have 100% had alcohol poisoning. Like probably you, I will say, let me clarify. I never drank a day before the day before I came to set only on the weekends. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. So Brent Leo, don't get mad. At it, was, it, was, it was on the weekend. Sorry. I was very responsible. The one that showed up. Yeah. Actually, I should probably not. Yeah, you that. should probably cut that. But before we go, we we wanted to hear the the story you've probably talked about for a while is that Billy Joel story. You said you said door. You, <laughs> you said got door, that little smile. I heard doorman and were you Billy Joel's doorman? doorman? Yeah, yeah. It was no his way. In, uh, in the eighties, he moved into the Saint Moritz on the Park, where he was a doorman for about 
uh, about 11 years. And uh, oh. You were a doorman for 11 years? Yeah. Wow. So Before I, uh, he was an actor. Wow. Yeah. And then I started acting in the late 80s, 89, 90, and I was still a doorman. So I was a doorman up until the time NYPD Blue. I got that show. I had were that. you really a doorman all the way up until then? Yeah. Wow. So I was, I, was, I was acting. I started around 89, 90, um, and uh, then I was acting maybe about three years, three, four years on the side. You know, but it was becoming more like yeah. more full time than I was being a doorman less and less. So yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, working four days and less hours. And I think hey, doormen you know, are like the truest New Yorkers. Yeah. I love doormen. But, but my, my you, doorman y'all know job all the secrets was interesting because I was a, at a hotel. Yeah. I wasn't like those guys in the apartment house. They look like they're going to pass away or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like a, a morgue or something. My I was like in and out of the street, Central Park South. So I was meeting everybody, yes. you know, celebrities. Politicians, athletes, all kinds of the rich secrets people. the doormen have, like say, you're saying, or doormen know all the secrets. Yeah, I knew a lot of stuff, and I was, I was, I was popular too. And and then when I started acting, people were like, "Wow, he's a, he's an actor now too, this kid." You know, and like, and they're like, "Well, what do you know? You're back on the door. You're still here." I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Even after a couple of movies I did with Spike and a few things, I didn't quit my job right away. Wow. Yeah. But when did uh, you officially know where you're like, okay, I might have some security in this now? Well, like I said, I was up for this job. With NYPD Blue, I almost didn't get the audition because I wasn't truly Hispanic and all this shit. Yeah. And then my agent got me in there and they were like, he got me in there to audition. Then they liked me and then they were like going back and forth on, well, is he Spanish? Does he have any Spanish blood? Because it was a, the guy was supposed to be Puerto Rican. And they get sensitive over that shit. And I was like, ah, man, don't take it away from me because of that. So that was a whole issue. It went on and on for a few months. And then finally they gave me the role of James Martinez and because uh, I looked kind of Hispanic. And, uh, but he was a New York guy, a New York cop, young cop. So when I was up for that job, I got sick. I took a leave of absence. I was like really sick. Had a re- relapse of a flu. And then finally I got the job and I was really, really thin, I remember. And we did the pilot. We did like two episodes. And then they offered me seven out of 13, which is really shit. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. It's not a big deal because... There's no real security there because if they don't like you, yeah. you could be gone. You, you know, they only owe you seven. But I, would, I didn't even think about that. All I knew was that, hey, this was a big show. They said, this is going to be huge, a big show, big opportunity. And it was. <laughs> so I had been acting. I've been working up towards that like three, four years. Then you had to move to L.A. So I said I had to make a choice. And I said, all right, this is it. I'm either going to you know, be a full-time actor. I can't be afraid. I got to resign. Say goodbye to my security, you know, job. But I didn't want to do this the rest of my life, and I gave it up because I said this is the moment. I was working as an actor three or four years on the side, doing. It. People were like, "You're doing really well for a guy doing it, you know, on the side, kind of." Um, so that was the that was the time ninety three ninety four. So I was sick, the leave of absence, got the pilot, and then they, you know, the show got picked up. I mean, whatever, and then I wound up doing. 20 out of 22, they, they liked me, Jeez, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, it became, I was a regular, but then I became like, you know, I didn't make a lot of money. It was like really, yeah. uh, it was really low. I was like, that's it. It was like, they were very cheap. Um, mm-hmm. But I didn't even think about the money. Um, I just thought about this is an opportunity. This is a chance. I didn't think about I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be rich. This is a chance for me to be successful and make a living, be a working class, a, a full full-time actor another thing too I was so gonna, that was my so i took the i took the risk another thing i was going to just add on to the the difference probably with his situation if that was today he didn't know that he was going to be on a show with a lot of successful people yeah. involved where today we have so much information that like you could look up in your auditions who's casting the show you look up deadline immediately producing that's also the toxicity of like la i feel like you can like people almost value themselves and other people based on their number they have on social so if you go to a little party like you look at somebody and they might look at you and if you have less they might like just turn the other way but if they see that you might have more that's why they want to talk to you you know what these guys were like juggernauts in television yeah and i knew of steve bochco's name because i didn't watch hill street blues but he was huge one of the biggest tv guys on network and this guy, David Milch, Greg Hoblet, they were like giants as far as directors, writers in television and Bochco. So it was almost better. I didn't know. I was in my doorman pants. I had a sweater when I had to audition. Yeah. It's at the Gulf and Western building. 
And I remember the whole room was packed with them. They came out from LA. And I was like, hands up! Yeah. <laughs> I had a few lines. I was like, I'm up for that. <laughs> and they were like all looking at me like, and I think they saw my jungle fever stuff and they were like, you saw mm. your stuff, man, kid. And I was like, cool, cool. And I walked out of there and my agent called me. We're still friends. It's not my agent, but we're still friends. And he was like, they fucking love you, kid. They love you, but I don't know yet. You know, and I was like, oh, great, great. Yeah. And, um, but I didn't know how powerful they were. Yeah. I just knew. Well, it sounds like your authenticity was your biggest weapon. Because you didn't go, you went in there blind, and that's why they liked you. I think a lot of people worked themselves up. But yeah, I mean, that was that was kind of my uh, was, thing, that was, I was authentic. Was the, was the set like an egoless set, or was there a lot of ego on set? Oh, on that set? Yeah. No, no, no. These guys were all, it was all class. Yeah. Cause, Cause this, like, was top, this was like top, These all these guys were more seasoned than me. Wait, my, I had some experience, so I was like, I got to act like I don't, like I belong here. But, yeah. but like, that's I knew how, I had talent. That's, yeah. but that's, I knew I had talent. But I had to like act like I was scared shitless because I didn't have a lot to do. To, to piggyback on that, what's your biggest moment you've had where you're like, Wait, how did I get here? Just internally, internally, you're like, okay, somehow I like I got here. Did you ever have that moment when it was a big movie or something like that? Uh, yeah, uh, it was kind of like, um, well, my first movie, and I remember like I was in a scene with my brother where we were playing these two Jewish guys. And it was him, me, and Denzel Washington flying in the room. <laughs> wow. And he's oh a star, God. my yeah. brother. And then Denzel, fucking huge movie star, flying in. And I was like, one time I wasn't even, I was like out of my light. And Denzel goes, hey, uh, move over this way. And my brother goes, he's looking out for you, Nick. <laughs> so I was like, and I was like, I was thinking like, wow, That's how crazy. the fuck did this happen? Yeah. And, and even NYPD Blue, like, wow, I quit my job. Wow, I'm in L.A.? I'm yeah. on a television show. This was really traumatic. Yeah, I bet. But ego. This was really like, like, like even. I mean, the stuff in New York was all. Some things were like didn't quite hit me. I was just kind of doing it. But I was like, wow. so the minute you have a change of scenery, like, yeah. I mean, from I had to move there, and I had never left New York. Yeah. You know, so I had to leave everything, and um, and I had no. I knew nobody. I was walking around on Ventura Boulevard, and it was like. I had to call Pacific Bell. I didn't even have a car. My friend, my agent, Marty, was like, don't worry, we'll get you, I'll drive you to the studio. We'll get you a car. And I was like, well, I was like, wow, where do I live? He goes, live in the valley near me. And you know, I lived in the valley, lived in Sherman Oaks. And Oh, that's where I lived for about yeah, five years. and I, I didn't know, I was on Beverly Glen. I didn't know anything, you know? So I was like, wow, I showed up at Real the studio. Real fish out of water. Real fish yeah. out of water. And I was a nervous wreck. I really was. I was just like... <laughs> I remember asking David Caruso. He was the great on the show. Like, I said, am I, am I doing am I, am I, He, he kind of like looked at me. He was really intense. But we were both from New York. And I said, am I doing all right? You know, because, you know, when you don't have a lot to do, you're like, wow, I, these guys are good. And, um, and they were probably looking at me. Because Dennis Franz came up to me one time. He was friends with Joe Montaigne. I used to stop everybody on the street. Dennis Franz goes, uh, hey, Nikki, um, Chicago guy. He goes, Can I ask you a question? I said, yeah. He goes, uh, you ever a doorman? Because <laughs> my friend Joe Mantegna, big actor, yeah. swears you stopped him in the street. I said, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> I, yeah, I that was I, me. Yeah, that 100%. was me. No, no, I said I used to stop everybody because he was laughing. He goes, that's a wild story. I said, yeah. And then Caruso, you know, he goes, he goes, man, kid, you're doing great. Don't let anybody fuck with you. I was like, all right. Well, I go, if David thinks I'm, if Dave thinks I'm doing good, I must be okay. And then this other guy, Hoblet. He, he was very, you know, supportive. Like, you know, he, he, I, mean, I didn't show I was nervous, yeah. but I was, yeah. I was, cause I saw, wow, this is, this is like, you got called up to the big leagues. Yeah. You're now on the big, even some of the movies, a couple of the early movies, but the movie that gave me the real confidence when I said, I can fucking do this. I jumped off in this movie, Jungle Fever. And I knew, I said, after that movie, I said, wow, that was the, I took the, I said, I got, I, I got the potential here to do this. Yeah. Because Mo Better Blues was great, but it was Jungle Fever that really, to me, convinced um, me. You guys are going to have to finish up. I've got a session I got to get to. No oh, worries. It's okay. Anyway. We, we've talked there. You're off Bye, anyway. Love you. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you guys so much for coming on. I don't mean to cut you short, but is our camera's about to die anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about Perfect. that. No worries. Well, thank you guys. Look out for Nick's music. You got any dates? For no no dates, but we got two records out, Tiffany and Hot Yoga. They're Beautiful. on Dude. YouTube, Spotify, all that. Small world. I said I had no idea you did music, but my friend Tyler Diamond directed and shot both of your 
videos. Yep. yep. Small fucking Tyler world. Diamond. That's so my guy. So yeah. Subconsciously, I knew, yeah. but we yeah, got a, great the, stuff. The next video coming out in song is called Fell in Love with the Party. It's directed by me, uh, my buddy Jack, and Tyler. Hell yeah. And uh, we got a lot more coming. So yeah. And then, and then Gabe, we got we got more TikToks coming out. Anything, Ooh, anything for you? Wait, Claw Gabe on everything. Out, Ooh, fuck me, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's dropping his merch soon. Dropping his merch. I can't. Yeah. I want yeah. one. And then uh, anything? You got any projects coming? Yeah, I got a couple out? of movies coming out. I got one out now. Overturn. Uh, I got a dog movie coming out. Christmas. I got the thing with him. Then we got a show we developed. We're still trying to sell. Yeah, we're bringing back Breaking Bread. Too. Uh, Breaking Bread's coming back with us and White Claw Game. So we'll have you guys on that. So Hell yeah, we'll, yeah have you guys out on that. And uh, yeah, and the Yankees, uh, they're gonna make the playoffs. So you know. they're gonna make they the sure playoffs. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> and if they don't, heart attacks coming. <laughs> uh, no, they're right, making the fucking playoffs. Oh, I like that. I like the insurance. All right, yeah. guys, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Follow everybody. Their social medias will be on the screen. Um, if you stay till the end, DM me on Instagram. A picture of Jared's mom. Uh, it's just what you I want to see. said that. All right, guys. Bye. Peace. Thank you.